the meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee of the Town Council to order on August 21st, 2019 at 1037 a.m. We do have a quorum um, and we are being video recorded. So our first item of business is um, the discussion of and vote on the proposed proclamation to celebrate the Jewish community of Amherst's 50th anniversary. Um, so does everyone have that proclamation? Have they read that and all? Um, our charge is to look at it for clarity, consistency, and actionability. So that's what we will be discussing. Do, does anyone have any recommended changes? No. The only one I have is to fix the date from the 19th of August to the 26th of August, because um, I think they thought it was coming this past meeting. So that's the only change I would recommend making. That one would have been made anyway, but we might as well do it now and send off with that change. So I'm making that to the document um, and we'll save it as a different document to forward to Lynn um, and Athena for... Oh, any, anything else? What I was wondering with the proclamation, it was good we looked at it, but the date would have gotten changed anyway. Um, it just seems like proclamations feel different than even a resolution or, uh, and a commemoration feels different as well. So it feels like in the scale of things, in terms of time, it's not. We will be discussing that <laughs> in our next item Thank of business, or two Thank items you. of business away, I believe, right? That's, no, that, that's fine. You're, you're right on point with what we're trying to figure out with policies. Um, seeing no one else has any recommended changes, um, I will personally make the motion, let me write this down. Motion, I'm, well, we need the, the motion for the council. Okay. So I'm moving to declare the proclamation to celebrate the Jewish community of Amherst's 50th anniversary, um, clear, consistent, and actionable. Second. No, Pat seconded it, oh. so. Second it yeah. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? That is a unanimous vote. With two absent. Um, I am going to actually take the next item out of order. We have items not anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance because on Monday night we were referred the um, percent for art working group charge or whatever we're calling that at this point in time for discussion, um, potential changes and all. I'm gonna work on, let me find what those comments and all were <laughs> as I then go back to that meeting note. Um, and does everyone have that up for um, review? So, okay. The one that was posted for the packet has highlights in yellow. Kathy did that. Um, at the meeting, so this is the document she sent me. Um, those highlights were her belief on what the potential problems were. Um, I obviously had a lot of concerns as people heard at the meeting. Um, but I also want to refer us to our draft work group language since I think this is intended to be a work group. We have language. Um, and so I think we should refer to that language 
um, in terms of looking at this document and maybe attempt to have it comply with mm -hmm. that. Um, so our work group language that we agreed upon last meeting um, says a few things. Um, they're created by the council or council committee to serve the council. They're not committees of the town and not subject to charter provisions governing mo multiple member bodies. So, um, and the motion to create a work group must include, so, so we had intended it to be a motion, not a charge. I don't know whether we want to sort of turn this idea that we have in front of us document into just a standard motion instead of a formal document. Um, we can uh, certainly do that in anticipation of work groups potentially being approved by the, this language being approved into the rules. Um, that motion must include the composition, the measure or issue that shall be with the work group's focus, the specific task to which the work group is assigned, the deliverables the originating body expects from the work group, and a date by which the work group will produce its deliverables. They're, they don't require a formal committee charge, and the purpose and composition is established by the motion to create them. The presiding officer of the originating body shall appoint all work group members, and the presiding officer or designee of the originating body shall preside over the work group until a chair is elected. They're subject to open meeting law, and it's dissolved by majority vote of the originating body. So do we want to attempt to modify this essentially into a motion instead of a charge, or do we want to try to just modify this charge and keep it a charge? I think that's the first thing we need to decide. Mm. So we would change we would change that to motion? So I think we would actually get rid of this document completely and write a motion that essentially has much of this. Oh, I see. You know, th instead of it having Town of Amherst name, all of this, it would be, you know, I move to create the percent group. for art bylaw working group as follows, and then we could list much of what's listed as the second half of this charge, but it would all be part of sort of a motion instead of a formal charge. Yes, Steve? So the proposal would be that, because there's nobody here, just us, um, but the proposal is that we would craft a motion that we think would be presentable. Yes. What I also heard Mandy say is that it could be a generalized motion where we insert, in this instance, percent for bylaw, or um, so that any, any charge, any committee that was starting a working group would just take that motion, put in the information, and stuff. Yeah, that, that yeah, would actually which, be pretty yeah, good, yeah. I think we, that's we a good idea. We con could convert it into sort of a general thing yeah. after we create it for yeah, this. to keep it as simple and direct as possible, because flexibility and speed are important mm -hmm. here. I support that idea. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is then make a new document that you guys aren't gonna be able to see right now. I'm going to save essentially this charge as a percent for art working group motion per GOL, and I will upload it once once I. But I'll I'll type as we're talking, <laughs> and so the first thing I'm going to type is a motion to create the percent for art bylaw working group per, well, we don't really have a rule for it yet, so I don't think we can cite the rule. Right. Um, eventually we would, but right now we can't. Um, So motion to create the percent for our bylaw working group, and it's I move to create the percent for art bylaw working group um, 
as follows, I think, and then just a colon, and then we'll just figure it out. Um, so I think then we just go down, if we're looking at this charge that we were presented, just delete the whole header section and go right to composition. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? composition, so there was a discussion at the council meeting. Um, about the composition and whether seeing that at least for this one, um, the town council is creating this, or at least it was brought to the council, not particularly just CRC or FinCom, that maybe it should be able to include non-CRC or FinCom members. Yeah. Um, just, uh, yes, Steve? Point of order. So is it our job to even have an opinion on this? That was just going to be oh, my okay. question, is, <laughs> is this... Is it our job to even have an opinion on this? Is that something, uh, this motion to make it consistent, so it was referred to GOL to make consistent with bylaws, rules, and charter. And so is that the composition of it something we as a committee should be modifying? It, at this point, I believe, beyond the fact that I'm concerned that one town staff to be designated by the town manager might actually not comply with the charter, um, beyond that, the other portions of it, I believe, are clear. They're con uh, consistent. We don't really have work groups right now. Mm -hmm. They're actionable, and um, they fit the definition of how we've defined wor work groups for the language we're going to send on to the council, which is a work group is defined as a temporary group that includes members of the public and may include counselors who are not members of the originating body to focus on a specific assignment. Um, Pat. Uh, just a, a minor question. Uh, here there are five voting members. Um, it, is that every working group would have five members? Yeah, okay, because no. that, yeah, that again speaks to we don't know what and what we will need until we create a group. Yes, yeah. Steve. And the reason we can't name town staff is against the charter is specifically why? The charter has a provision, and I'm gonna pull it up um, once I find it. that says, um, I always have to find the section in the charter. Um, it is section 2.3B that says interference with administration. Neither the town council nor any individual member thereof shall give orders or direction either publicly or privately to any employee of the town not appointed by the town council. So in theory, I think potentially it might be okay. I think this one's on a line. I don't. I don't know because we're create. It's a. It's a council committee, though. That's. It's an advisory group. It's an. Uh, it's an advisory group. Its only job is to advise the town council. So. Or the, or the committee. Right. Or the committee. The committees. So it's not. We're not giving direction to. A staff member or to the. Staff member is there to give direction to us. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe reword it that says the composition is, I mean, essentially this one, one town staff to be designated by town manager. It could be. It uh, could be town manager or designee. I mean, we, you can't stop the manager from designating someone. Yes? Yeah, when we discussed this, at CRC, um, that was how Dave Zomack proposed. Mm -hmm. The town manager designee. We could also we could also say that so Dave Zomack is on the CRC mm -hmm. by his own volunteerism by at the direction of at the, the direction of the town manager. So the town manager seems to have the right to appoint 
liaison yes. to committees as he sees fit. So we could say something like that. The town manager may designate a staff member to um, be a member as he sees fit. Or well, he now, yeah. yeah. As they see fit. I guess I... I, I no, just just talk. <laughs> uh, it seems to me that just saying town manager or designee would do it. Shall we do that then? Yeah. Okay, so that would be the fourth bullet point would read town manager or designee. Um, so right now the motion composition five voting members with the same bullet points. Um, the two counselors, one from finance, one from CRC, should we split them out as separate bullet points for clarity? Yes, yeah, and we also need to make sure that, that at the CRC finance, we have class members that we have to disclose. One, one counselor who serves on the finance committee. One counselor who serves on the community resources committee. Um, and then we have chair of Amherst Public Art Commission former chair of Amherst Public Art Commission, drafter of former bylaw. So that one's very um, unspecific. The former chair, there's many, I suspect, oh, former true. chairs. <laughs> um, so, um, immediate past chair, maybe. I think that's how the person they're referring to. I think we should just take Bill Keyes. Should, should we just yeah. name them? Yeah. OK. Yeah, because that's an unusual. So Bill Kazan, K-A-I-Z-A-N, right? K -A -I -Z -A -N. And Eric. Eric Brody. And then town manager or designee. Mm -hmm. So, Pat? I'm just trying to figure out the town staff would be needed for this, whether it was the town manager or not. I don't see that for this. I could see it if we needed Stephanie Ciccarella about something or, so it feels like, why? I would think, if I may, yeah. I would think that he would want, well, A, he may himself be involved, but one of his facilities people or somebody that knows about finance or about Yes. So we're yeah, we're getting close to discussing the pros and cons of the actual composition instead of whether it's clear. Um, yes, we are. Yeah, so yeah. we could come up, you know, this is something I think that should be brought up at the council meeting in terms of is this the right composition. Um, we need to designate who a points these members, the two counselors, and I believe um, didn't we, the presiding officer of the originating body shall appoint all work group members. Yes. Um, so five, the composition is five as follows. Um, five voting members appointed by the president of the council. Yeah. Well, the if the council's voting this to create it, then yeah. the president appoints. Um, uh, if we're trying to follow our work group rules, we do have to declare who's going to appoint these. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I get your concern because if this was a CRC thing, then CRC would be appointing the CRC member. If this was a finance, right. then finance. But it could be a CRC thing, and the CRC chair would appoint all the members. Would then appoint right. the finance yeah. committee yeah. member, though, that, too. That, it's that's not. That's not. Yeah, that's yeah. That. See, it, it, it leads to, yeah, okay. 
Are you okay with that? <laughs> I, I know it seems weird. President only would be appointing if she passes. She wouldn't be appointing Eric or. She would technically appoint the other three, but they're named, right? They're already, you know, there's the composition. Three of them are by name. She would probably formally appoint them even though they're named in the charge, though. So this is a one off. And it's, 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 what I'm struggling with, and I could. Uh, is the idea that a work group evolves from a committee. It doesn't involve the council, it involves the committee's work. And so I have no trouble with the committee chair picking the members for the committee and going. I'm having trouble with um, this, uh, the council president deciding who the counselors are when we know one comes from finance and one comes from CRC, which is totally appropriate. So I'm just feeling really uncomfortable with that. I, I understand. It's gonna get even weirder when we deal with the report back to the originating body when my whole thing was this should not be reporting back to the council. <laughs> so I, I, I mean, is this something that, that should not be a council motion, should be a CRC created work group that recognizes that FinCom also needs to see the bylaw when it comes back, Steve. I think I think the only option is to report to the council, and the council can refer it back to the committee. But I, I don't think that you can. I don't think that we can have a council work group that explicitly reports, sends its report straight to the committee. I think it has to go to council for distribution at the council principal. But they're sitting at the committees right now. This bylaw that you're trying to modify is yeah. sitting at CRC yeah. right now and CRC has not reported it back out. So I think it needs to go back to CRC and, and finance. Back to the committees that have referred or whatever. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So I don't think it I should be, I mean, that's why I don't think it should be reporting to the originating body, which is the council. So the question becomes, is this something under clarity, consistency, and actionability that consistency-wise, this is our first one, so we don't really have consistency, but is consistency-wise this something we recommend that council doesn't do that CRC does? Or, does, yeah. or finance does, yeah. and one of them takes hold of this work group now and does it even though it's going to have members of non-CRC members on it, say, if CRC takes a hold of it? Is that something we could recommend under a consistency thing? And the consistency would be the council already referred something to a committee, that's the committee that needs to deal with it now. Thoughts? I feel like it should um, stay with the committee. Yeah. A committee motion. Because well, I'm, I'm thinking a lot about the whole point of the work group um, in any of the council committees is to get something done as quickly as possible. And if we have to then go back to the president to have the president appoint the people, that it, it just feels awkward. Um, that's why I keep asking, is this a one-off? Is this a one-off? Um, and I also feel like if a work group comes, it, it bubbles up in CRC. We decide to have a work group. And uh, we know what we want. We know where we're hoping to get what the kind of information and everything we want to get. Why would we give our appointment, give that away to somebody who's not on the committee? And, and then I, I would say that in this sense as well. You as chair of CRC know, your, know us well and uh, Andy, as chair of finance, knows his folks well, and you can either you can even choose yourselves, but it, it just seems to me that you have more information about the point, you know, what we're trying to work on than the president, as informed as she is. Steve. Either way, um, so I think that, you know, just to follow on that thread, I think that at this point, Lynn knows us all pretty, that knows us all pretty well. Um, 
I think it has more power if it's appointed by the president. I think it's more has more authority if it's appointed by the president. Why does it need more authority? Great question. <laughs> it's work of a committee. It's coming from a committee. It's not coming for the committee is not going to report back to the council. It's going to report back to the committee that sponsored it. If GOL sets up a working group, then that working group reports only to GOL, and then we use that information to work on something that we will bring to the council. So, so can I can I say something? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no, I I um I just want to add to it when we were discussing the language for work groups, even though we put the council as a body can be an originating body, we, we struggled with this distinction between ad hoc committees and work groups, and we actually have an agenda item on that today. Um, but when we came up with this language and pushed it forward to the council last week, we adopted, you know, approved some language. Um, I think the discussion there was they would be, work groups would mostly be used in committees, not by the full council, and that if the full council thought something was so big, it would probably be an ad hoc committee, not a work group. And this bylaw, and, and taking that sort of conversation to where we're at now, there's two committees that have recognized that maybe they need some more work and they need people working on this a little bit more because maybe it needs more tweaking and can be done in either committee or they don't want to work against themselves. So in taking the discussion we had about work groups and what Pat was saying about um, flexibility and all, um, I, maybe this is the time to set sort of that consistency of practice with We've, the council's already referred it to committees. Now the committees need to work together to say who's gonna take a hold. This was something when it was referred to three committees at one time, how's that going to work? So maybe the chair of CRC, which I know you're sitting right here, but, but in the future if there's two committee referrals, those two chairs get together and say, who's gonna have, how are we doing this timing? What's the timing gonna look like? And, and this one, because it's more, you know, finance needs to look at it because it's got financial implications. But the policy part, in some sense, is, is the more complicated issue before finance says, is this something we can do financially? So when I look at it, I say CRC probably needs to take hold of this, own it. They know finance has some concerns with it. So CRC creates this work group, talks to the chair of finance and says, who wants to be on this work group? We think someone should be there puts that person on because you don't have to have just CRC counselors on there. You can create the work group, put that person on, put maybe some other counselors that aren't on CRC on it as Darcy at the meeting on Monday was concerned about, um, put these other two on, and then it, it works with our work group wording of reporting back to the originating body, getting it going that way. Sounds good, <laughs> but I, I have another idea here, which okay. is that for the two counselors that are named, the two counselors that are identified, why not just say CRC chair or designee, and for the other one, say finance chair or designee? Because we're, we're still running into the appointment problem of the president then appoints you. And then you then designate someone else. I, you know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we're, right. we're running into that yeah, problem, yeah, whereas yeah. if, if we take this out of this committee, GOL, because we were charged with coming up with something for next week's meeting, and essentially say, our recommendation is, here's our working work group rules, and under that, we discussed it, and we believe CRC should create it, and Perfect. hey, if we want to do this, here's your motion. <laughs> if, if we today yeah. want to try and come up with a motion, we, we could, yeah, and report good. out, here's the sample motion we came up right. with that would comply with it, we think this is something for consistency stake in the future that CRC should just move and adopt if they feel like it, that they're probably the control. And that motion would be five members. It doesn't even have to say how many counselors because the chair, you know, we could. Um, and then the chair can appoint 
who the chair feels is necessary to be on that. We could say how many counselors, the motion probably should say how many members of the public and how many counselors because they have to have members of the public, but, but we could do that and that could be our report out to the council, which is we suggest this just be a CRC motion. I agree with what you're saying. Um, what I also um, feels important to me, CRC I think is gonna be calling on work groups a lot. Um, and that means that we may be, I mean, fi I feel like finance has direct, um, because we have this overlap of membership, um, we've already talked about some of the financial implications and stuff, and our job at CRC is to go uh, to deal with impact. So, and this is an instance where we need somebody from finance to talk about what they're seeing as issues. So it's this collaborative nature of what CRC is going to need from a lot of different committees. Um, I would hate to, oh, I can't think of a good example right now, but I, I feel like we need to be able to uh, collaborate and across committee lines all the time to get a full uh, flood of information about the impacts. Because we need it bef even before finance makes their decision sometimes, I think. What are some of the financial pros and cons? We're not decide, we're, our job is only to present these impacts, potential impacts. So where do we wanna go from here? Do we wanna continue trying to create a motion? I think so. And then we'll figure out how we get that out of this committee and present that to the council. Yeah, so that that can be discussed and amended as needed. Now, will this present? Will this require two hearings? Is this a first reading, second reading? Is this? So this isn't a bylaw. All right. Okay. Um, and if our our recommendation, it sounds like we're moving towards making a recommendation that the council not act, that it just be the CRC act at its next meeting. I think is. So today at our meeting, we could pick our, who we want to be on this. Um, we could ask somebody from finance. We could talk to Andy. Um, Does CRC have a meeting Because he's on today? CRC, yeah, So, which is interesting, but. I mean, if we come up with a draft motion today, we could make that reference back to the council. Does CRC meet next week too? No. No. It, there's nothing stopping CRC from adopting a motion this afternoon. It would look weird, maybe, but maybe not. Except we don't, if we don't have an official work group policy, therefore we wouldn't have the enabling. But you've got the ability to create a subcommittee. Yeah. But a subcommittee is just us. And I don't know what Robert's rule says that, about that. Let's, let's I guess. Uh, motion, I, think. I think it would be premature, too. I don't agree, but that's okay. Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm not clear about what the reason. I, I feel like there's resistance that from you, Steve, and that's fine. I'm just trying to understand it more clearly, so there, I'm, I'm not understanding necessarily. Yeah. Well, let, let me try, because I think I got what Steve's saying. I think what Steve's saying is right now, because the rules don't actually have wording for work groups, the only way to create a working group is to create an ad hoc committee under the charter and under our rules, because that's the thing we can create under the rules. And that would, if it's a subcommittee, which committees can do, subcommittees in general by definition only include members of the committee. Mm -hmm. So CRC doesn't have the authority to create a subcommittee that also includes Bill Kazin and Eric Brody. Um, but the council as creating an ad hoc committee does have that authority. Um, and so. The council then also has the authority to put forth a motion and which this would is becoming, which this one would be it, it just the council may have the authority you know so so 
Yes, yeah, so maybe, and, and the dual readings would be for us to get work groups adopted to be able to do it, um, which would take multiple times for CRC to do it. I think that's what he's saying is he's not sure his committees right now have the authority to do this outside of a council ad hoc committee or another council action. I understand my frustration comes with uh, a lack of speed yeah. and, and, resi and simplicity. Um, it's a, a common frustration of mine that I'm working on letting go of. <laughs> um, there are ways to do things more simply, not necessarily in government. Uh, so I'm feeling like um, I am having trouble with thinking that, all right, we, brought, we had it at a council meeting, Monday it'll come up, and then we have to have another reading of it before we can, and then we have to, what if yeah. the rules and procedure thing doesn't get changed? It just feels like the work of a committee is being stymied, and not intentionally by anybody on the council, not by anybody, but that's what it feels like. And We're making it so much easier for our successes. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so I think we're trying to avoid creating an ad hoc committee. Right. So, so I think given Steve's concerns, Maybe the right thing to do is to refer this out of our committee with an actual motion, and the motion actually say that the originating, that, that the town council designates CRC as the originating body in the motion, which would get it out of the town council being the originating body. Um, we can do what we want, we're just, creating this by motion, not by, you know, calling it something, it's a measure. We can do what we want with measures. <laughs> um, you know, and so it's not, it, it, while the rules don't totally say, it's still a measure, so you can't refer to a rule, you can't refer to the charter. Um, we could potentially temporarily, I, I, I'm, I have to think through the full mechanism for how, but maybe it needs to be a motion at this point by the council, but that motion includes designating CRC as the originating body, or as the sort of authority body or reporting body or however we wanna do it. Does that sound? Yes. Okay. So we're back to five voting members appointed by um, as follows. So I'm gonna add a sentence, the percent for our bylaw working group shall, um, the town council designates the community Resources Committee as the originating body. Is, it, is that how we did it? Originating body of the percent for art bylaw working group. So that's the first sentence I just drafted. Whoops. And then composition five voting members appointed by the chair of the Community Resources Committee. Right? Um, one counselor who serves on the Finance Committee, one counselor who serves on the Community Resources Committee, Bill Kazin, Eric Brody, and the town manager or designee, and then at the meeting, you can argue for a different composition if you want. Um, that's the way it reads right now. Actually, I'm going to turn this into paragraphs. So the percent for art bylaw working group shall have five voting members appointed by the chair of the resources Community Resources Committee, and then as follows. Uh, 
um, and then the bullet points for that. Um, so that's the composition. The measure or issue that shall be the work group's fo focus. So that is this, this what was the purpose. I'm gonna write the focus of the percent for art bylaw working group shall be to designate or to develop. Yep. I don't think that we're developing it. I think we're updating and revising a previous bylaw. That's what we're actually doing. To update and revise the percent for art bylaw passed by, passed by town, town meeting. meeting in spring of 2017. Yeah. In spring 2017. So that's the f measure or issue that shall be the work group's focus, the specific task to which the work group is assigned. So that's gonna be number four, and I'll show you guys everything when, when I get it. Um, the percent for art bylaw working group shall And then this is revise the previous bylaw to address concerns identified by the Massachusetts legislature, clarify definitions, respond to questions or concerns raised by council committees. I think so, mm -hmm. is that clear? Mm -hmm. um, develop a revised version or propose I, instead of develop, I think propose a revised version. A revised version of the bylaw for consideration by the Community Resources Committee and Finance Committee she's got review of GLL and legal review by town attorney. So I think I just stopped that sentence after finance committee. Um, it's, it, yeah, right. Because then the so, so the CRC, would CRC and finance would revise, would redo it. They make their recommendations once they're recommended, because they can revise it further. Right. Once the recommendations are made, the, the formal referral to GOL then kicks in, and it automatically comes to GOL from there. Yeah, my, my concern was that no committees were listed in this, yeah. which is, yeah. So I think we can just stop that sentence after finance committee, which are the two committees that currently are, are, are involved in this, yeah. And then, okay. So that's the shall, there's the report back. Um, so that's the specific tasks. I think the report doesn't involve a specific task. The next thing in our work groups is the deliverables the originating body expects from the work group. Um, and then a date by which the work group will produce its deliverables. So I think both of those could fall, could be our report section that's listed here and was originally drafted as reports um, is the percent for art bylaw working group shall provide the a revised and updated bylaw with a report explaining changes from the original percent for art bylaw passed by town meeting to the community resources committee and, and finance committee and finance committee by, and then that would be the September 23rd date. Mm -hmm. By September 23rd, that's the next, that's the council meeting. 
do we there was concerns that that might be too quick because it's four weeks away and people were talking two months Steve the question is is September 23rd the appropriate deadline it is mm -hmm. I would say a week of classes would be right expeditiously October 31 yes that's two months, in some sense, that's two months, which was the original uh, appointed time frame, because mm -hmm. in, in the original charge that had a two month time length of appointment and then September 23rd. October, October 31? Yeah. Um, we're gonna get rid of charge adopted, charged revised, and SME status voted. Um, Although we should probably include SME status for Bill and Eric, just for Bill and Eric's purposes. Mm -hmm. Special municipal employee. Uh, uh, do working groups, are they, cons I guess they're multiple member bodies, so they would need, <laughs> and then it would need to be separately voted. For two months, does it matter for them? I don't okay. think either of them has to do with whether or not you can pull as a county. Right. Why don't we, leave, case, yeah. why don't we leave, leave it out? Off, okay. And then if somebody at the council brings it up, oh, yep. you know, we'll <laughs> I, I was just deleting the line and like, <laughs> do we need to do something with that? Okay, so we've got the motion to create a work group must include at a minimum composition of the work group. We've got that. Shall have five voting members as follows. Um, and then the measure or issue that shall be the work group's focus, the focus of the work group shall be to update and revise the specific task to which they're assigned. So I have that in here, that's the next one. And then a, the deliverables, the original embodying expects from the work group, which is on this one, number five, a revised and updated bylaw with a report explaining changes from the original bylaw um, to CRC and finance by October 31. And so that fulfills both four and five of our work group draft language. Um, and then I'm assuming that CRC alone would vote whether they were recommending the bylaw, finance would vote independently and those and the bylaw would be brought to the town council. After coming to GOL, yeah. yes. Um, I'm just looking at the rest of our work group language. Presiding officer of the originating body shall appoint all work group members. So the fact that we designated CRC means you appoint, um, chair of CRC appoints, the presiding officer or designee of the originating body shall preside over the work group until a chair is elected. So you'll have to preside then. Um, even if I'm not the member? Even if you're not the member. Work groups are subject to open meeting law. Work group is dissolved by majority vote of the originating body. Um, so that would, since we just, if, if work groups are adopted by the time, by October 31st, mm -hmm. then um, since this motion would designate CRC the originating body of this working group, or actually it should be work group, not working group, shouldn't it? Um, then CRC would be able to dissolve it on its own. I'm changing all the working to work. Consistency, right? Um, do we need any attached reference documents? Probably not. I'm just looking at what else is left on this document. I think we can write, yeah. To delete that? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so let's, I'm gonna enlarge this on my computer so you guys can see it. And you guys can come on over to read this before we make a motion to forward this on. Okay. 
fine. I think it's anything with a E, just no. yeah, between the Z and the E. Oh, it's a Z. Oh, you can see it on your. No, she shouldn't be able to, because this is just online. Huh. Oh, yeah, I think you're right with the Z-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks perfect. Do you want to see it, Pat? Do you want to see it? So everyone in the room has seen what I just typed up based on what we were talking about on a motion to create the percent for art bylaw work group. Um, so this then, let me go back to my notes. So we created a new motion. Now, what is what we're, we're going to recommend the council adopt the motion? Is that right? I think so. I think given where we stand with rules of procedure and all, I think that's just the right thing. Um, so that means I will move to recommend that the council adopt the motion to create the percent for art by law work group um, and I further move that GOL declares the motion to create the percent for art by law. Um, I'm sorry. The I, I got it typed out here. I'll read it again. Okay. Um, work group, the motion to create the percent for art work group, clear, consistent, and actionable, including in conformance with proposed work group rules of procedure. So I'm gonna read that again. So my motion is to recommend that the council adopt the motion to create the percent for art bylaw work group. I further move that the GOL declares the motion to create the percent for art bylaw work group clear, consistent, and actionable, including in conformance with proposed work group rules of procedure. Does that sound? Okay, so that's me. Who's gonna second? Oh, St Steve was gonna get this second, right? Any discussion? All those in favor? We are unanimous with two absent. Okay, so that's the referral of the percent for our working group. So that brings us to uh, number three on our agenda, we're, and this one is discussion of revisions to rules of procedure, rule 10.4 ad hoc committees in light of recommendations regarding language for rule 10.5 work groups. So um, the reason this is on there is because Evan thought we should probably clarify um, the ad hoc committees language because of the new work group language. Um, the ad hoc committee language is in our packet as a separate, um, a separate document 
um, of actually, I think, what did I do? How did I put it up there? Um, not rule eight, so. To figure out how I put it up here. I might not have put it up here because I was waiting to see what we did because um, I didn't have changes. So there were no changes in what was adopted on Monday night to the ad hoc committee um, language that the full set of changes we just put forward didn't have anything to the ad hoc committees. Um, so right now we've got, I'll just read what ad hoc committees are. The council may establish ad hoc committees for the purpose of considering a particular policy or for other purposes. Such committees may make recommendations and sponsor bylaws, resolutions, or other measures. Council charges to establish ad hoc committees shall specify the purpose and membership. A, ad hoc committees shall not exist beyond the current term of the council. B, the president shall appoint all ad hoc committee members. That's it for ad hoc committees. I think what Evan wanted, and we can either decide to postpone this till Evan is here, because he's not here, um, or go forward. I think what he was thinking was our working group rules that we just went through were attempting to differentiate between an ad hoc committee and a working group. And so I think what he was desiring was some sort of language in the ad hoc committee rule that essentially says ad hoc committees shall only include counselors, because I think that was the one thing we determined was the difference. Okay. So we can either work on that now or we can postpone that for another two weeks till Evan is here, which would then postpone the ability for us to bring work groups back to the council. And I'm not sure we want to wait longer on that. So <laughs> I don't see why we can't go ahead. Okay. I mean, what he's saying is clear. And so the language we used in work groups was a work group is defined as a temporary group that includes members of the public and may include counselors who are not members of the originating body to focus on a specific assignment. Um, so we could take that and say something like into this ad hoc yeah. council committees. Um, A council for the purpose, we could add a, add a section, instead of, we have an A and a B, mm -hmm. we could either put a C in or we could, um, council, in this council charges to establish ad hoc committee shall specify purpose and membership. I actually wonder if that should be A. Yeah. <laughs> like if, if we should just move that down to an A. Um, so I'm gonna move that one down to an A. B is ad hoc committee shall not exist beyond the current term of the council then. C is the president shall appoint all ad hoc committees. Um, do, uh, I think between the, the specified purpose and membership and exist is where we would put this definition or, you know, or, or ad hoc committees, so I'm, whoops. It's going to have to be a B. Um, so ad hoc committees include current counselors only, that do not include members of the public? Yes. Yes. Do not include members of the public. Do we want something beyond just that wording? Ad hoc committees do not include members of the public. We good with that? Yeah. Okay. So that and then we've got now an A, a B, a C, and a D. Um, What's the document you're working with? I, I was working on my own. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I had just created a document that just had that rule in it. I will go back to, there is, um, 
I don't think I have it in here. Um, I will go back and upload it to the same document that I've, the new rules that we adopted on Monday, I have now inserted our work group language into with track changes. I will put this language into that document. I can do that now so people can see it so we can then potentially vote to just forward that whole thing onto um, the council yeah. If, yeah, if we're willing. Let me get this in the document it's in now. It's saved there and let me pull that document up on, in my computer. Um, and then you guys can review that one. Um, it'll need a table of contents update too, but. Seven work groups are in ten. Way down in ten. So, so what did we just do? So this is now an A. We now have, and I will show it to you now. Um, so, when you guys can take a walk over again, there is a document called Rules of Procedure Adopted 2019-05-20, Revised 2019-08-19, Proposed GLL Revisions Work Groups. Okay. And it now has in 10.4 the Ad Hoc Council Committee language we have to still vote on. Um, which has an A, B, C, and D with B is the main addition, mm -hmm. which is ad hoc committees do not include members of the public. And then the work group language that I already pretty much read today that we adopted last week um, or two weeks ago in on 10.5 and just fully inserted there as because yeah. there was no language there. So it's just a full, here's the proposal. And those are the two changes um, to it to the rules as adopted on Monday, which is why I didn't upload that, because it's just a new document. So, um, I think we're looking at, actually no, we're just looking at one motion, I think. Um, yeah, because we already did the work group motion. Um, let me look at what that work group, that one's not up yet, because it's on just my computer. Um, I, will, I will get them all up. <laughs> <laughs> at, at a later point, um, but yeah, no, that one's not up. No, it's not that. It's just they're not they're not on the cloud. Um, so this is so I'm looking for a motion. This is ad hoc committees. A motion to what was our motion last week? Recommend. Was it motion to recommend is what it is. So it's a motion to recommend the changes made, the revisions made at the August 21, 2019 GOL meeting regarding Meeting two, rule 10 point, what rule is this one? 10.4, ad hoc committees. So I think the motion is sufficient if it just reads, I move to recommend the revisions made at the August 21, 2019 GOL meeting to rule 10.4 ad hoc committees. I'll make the motion. Page 21, GOL, to rule number 10.4. Ad hoc committees. Yep. Okay. Who's going to second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. That is a 3 0 vote. And with two absent? I believe that allows us to, oh, 
let me do one other thing. Alyssa recommended that we clarify clerk, town clerk versus clerk of the council everywhere in the rules. I haven't gone through and done that yet. Um, when I forward these two on, can I go through and do that? Yep. So, okay, so by consensus, MJH can revise the clerk references as appropriate. MJH. <laughs> appropriate prior to forwarding to the council. Clerk, town clerk, as appropriate. And then I'll forward the whole document again with a report on those two sets of things. Um, we'll see which, I'm not sure it'll be up on the 26th next week's meeting, but I'll know later today, but I'll work on getting them on an agenda. Um, so that's ad hoc committees. That brings us to what time we've got 45 minutes. Um, I am going to push forward and skip numbers four and five. I was gonna skip five anyway because George was taking the lead on that and he's not here. Um, four is resolutions, proclamations, and commemorations. Um, for now, we're gonna skip that. There are three of the four documents up in our packet, um, but I think I'd rather have a full four person discussion and it's not as time sensitive as number six is. Um, and number six is the candidate statements. Um, and so we got a town council opinion. So six on the agenda is a follow up on a referral from the town council to advise on a policy to comply with charter section 7.6 publication of candidate statements. We had a little over a month ago, more than a month ago, sent a request off to the town attorney to see if it was even legal under campaign finance regulations and our charter and state law and all to publish candidate statements anywhere, including a website, um, or if not a website, on an actual physical bulletin board, and we got an opinion back today on that matter, and given that, um, candidates are going to turn in papers mid-September. Um, I think this one's a little more time sensitive than the others, so we should look at this one to decide what we want to do um, and how we want to move forward. Uh, I, I will summarize my understanding of this legal memo, which is, is part of the packet. Um, and can be found both in SharePoint and as part of the packet on the website. Um, basically, my understanding is yes, it's legal for us to create a policy. Um, that policy can be something that allows for publication on a website, but that town staff is not allowed to write the statements that um, that, and they can't be mailed to voters, um, that it, it can be published on a bulletin board. Um, you know, if we adopt one, it would be consistent with the law if we adopt a policy that they cannot be mailed to voters. Um, municipal resources are not to be used to develop the candidate statements, so um, instead, the policy adopted should make clear, I'm, and I'm reading directly from the uh, opinion, instead the policy adopted by the council should make clear that candidates are required to develop their own content. To that end, the web page where such statements are posted should also include a disclaimer indicating that the statements are provided by the candidates and do not reflect the position of the town in whole or in part. Um, so that puts the burden back to us to come up with a draft policy for the council to consider, I think. Um, if we, if, town attorney said we can do it, so I think it's up to us to talk about what that policy might look like and then draft one. Thoughts? Hmm.
Do you want me to test something? Yeah. So, so I, I, I'm happy to come up with language. Um, I, I think what we should talk about is the parameters of it. Okay. Because I think what the town attorney wrote is clear. Yeah. The policy, we can adopt a policy, yeah. and the policy requires candidates to develop their own content. So, so I think the policy would start with, um, in accordance with the charter, candidates may candidate statements will be published on the town bulletin board. Um, here is the parameters. And then, you know, something like that. I can come up with that language, but but I think we need to come up with what would they look like. So things I'm thinking about is what is the length? Do, do we want to unlimited statements or do we want to limit candidates to a specific number of words or a specific number of sentences or a specific number of characters? You know, um, do we want to allow candidates to request a hyperlink to a website, some sort of website or Facebook page or something, or do we not want any hyperlinks associated? If so, how many are they allowed to have? Um, what would that look like from the town website point of view and obviously include in whatever policy we draft um, this um, disclaimer yeah. and all. Um, is there a deadline? You know, I think the policy should have, potentially should have something about when that statement will go up. Mm -hmm. um, who gets on that statement? Although I think the charter might already clarify that. Um, the charter language is, um, the town council shall establish a process compliant with state campaign and political finance laws for candidates whose names, uh, 7.6, whose names will appear on the election ballot to publish statements regarding their candidacy on the town bulletin board. So I think the charter already limits mm -hmm. who yep. gets it. So write-in candidates don't get a statement per the charter, but people who have qualified do, oh. um, yeah. according to the charter. Yeah. Um, but I think those are the things, if we can discuss some of these parameters, I can come back at the next meeting yeah. with a draft policy. I keep bouncing back to uh, the videotaped statements that we do about uh, uh, media, yeah. And sitting here, I haven't written a paper in so long, I haven't. I'm trying to be a reasonable word limit. So the, let, let me just give you an idea. The JCA proclamation that we just passed today is 332 words. <laughs> it just happens to pop up on Word when I have it open on Word. <laughs> so this See. is bringing back the trauma of the campaign last year, but <laughs> um, I would call the Gazette, the Mass Live, Mothers Out Front, a bunch of organizations asked us to, the housing group, asked us to give statements. And I think we could, the Gazette seemed to be particularly brief. So I think we could borrow from, yeah, from something like that. Um, what I'm thinking about is each one of those had a very specific topic or topics that we were looking at. And we were, so it seems more to me, and I couldn't be wrong, um, that a candidate's statement on the town website would sort of be an introductory, here's who I am, these are the values I have, this is what I would be working on directly, or which feels a little different than, um, still need a limit, but. The, the League of Women Voters asked us, they asked us for something, they did something. They did, also. and I think there were limits to, I think everything had a yeah, limit. Actually, the League of Women Voters was probably the most challenging. I would, I would use something like that as a model. Uh, the other thing is that 
maybe I'm getting way down into the weeds already, but it'll drive the managers of the website insane if you submit a statement on Tuesday, then on Wednesday you want to amend it, and on Thursday you want to add something. So I think once submitted, it's, it's done. It's done. Yeah, and it'll be copied exactly as you submitted it, and that's how it goes. So once submitted, done, no revisions permitted. Or delete. Yeah. No revisions permitted. Yeah, yeah. Um, submit by a certain date. Um, do we, that date to me, so there's, but I, I think I think we should have a date and a time, like close of business on so many days, you know, either this particular day or so many days after. And I was thinking maybe more, you know, different candidates, candidates can submit their signatures the day after papers were available in July or all the way up till mid-September. I think it's most fair if no statements go up until after all candidates are certified. Oh, yeah. um, it seems to be the fairest yeah. to me. And so that, to me, leads to a deadline of maybe a certain number of days after candidate signatures are certified by the Board of Registrars. Mm -hmm. And we can pick that number of days, but something like that, whatever that deadline is, and refer to it as that general deadline since that date would change mm -hmm. every year. So the critical thing is when you get the signatures in, and then the registrar has, I don't remember how many days to certify, 10 days, right? Your date doesn't, but yeah. once you submit your papers, then you could say, what I would say is two weeks after, I'd say into September would be a so reasonable deadline because we don't need to wait for the certification. No, but it's only candidates whose names will appear on the ballot. But oh, so, so they don't. They could submit yeah, before, so they, they but once it's certified, it. only candidates. And if it's not certified, if, it, doesn't if it's not certified it, it is ready to go. Yeah. So could we? Do we want to provide? If we're only going to have November, we can't just do a, a date certain because if we end up with a special election, it needs to relate so to after that. So maybe the deadline ten submit. business days after. Yeah. I don't know. We, well, yeah, the submitting of s the paper submission deadline. I can come up with the wording. Um, Actually, five you days? Your, you have to hand your papers to the town. Clerk. No, but, but we don't want it per person. We want it one deadline for everyone. No, I know. But what I'm thinking is that you hand your papers to the town clerk, the town clerk holds and gives you the, your opportunity to post something on the town. Mm, that they have a piece of paper? Have people already submitted? Some, oh. I think, have. I don't know. No, but, but yeah. we need a, a deadline for submission, right. which... I would ten say is either five or ten days after the the filing, the, the filing that the filing deadline. Yeah. Yeah. Do we like five or do we like ten? I think ten five, five. five. Yeah. I'm trying to think of if I had any idea what I was talking about at the time I filed my papers. So we should also have a publishing deadline of when the statements will go on the website. So to give, I'm thinking to give the town clerk guidance on this matter. So the, the actual statement from the candidate can, uh, has to be in by five days. Of yeah. Of this, um, five days after the filing deadline. After the filing yeah. deadline. But then the clerk has 10 days to certify them. Something like that. And you're saying you're going to hold everybody's statement until they're certified. Yeah. So. So. so So the clerk will publish on the website. Do we want to go no later than 10 days or 15 days after the filing deadline? That would give them 10 days from when all the candidates had to submit. So the election is in November. When would things be going up? Early October at this one. If, if we did 15 days, I think it would be early October. Yeah, that would be. And then there are other things. 
the first page looks kind of strange. Before the, yeah. yeah. Okay. But this, this can't and shouldn't be their only. No. Um, so candidates submit by five days after, once submitted, no revisions. Do we want to say they will submit them by email only because that makes the cut and paste easier? Yes. Submit email only. Yeah. Well, is email a box or you know, blah, blah, blah? I mean, is there a better Google Drive? Email, it's just too easy. I was thinking email only, and then we can ask the town to create a specific email address for that, or just the town, to the town clerks, to yeah. town clerk at, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To town clerk. Do you think Google sent everybody an email, please? I did, well, no, it's just text, email is fine. And then we have the... Ooh, just text. That's, right. a, that's a good thing to consider. Right. Are we going to allow pictures or... We have to have pictures because that's something that people in the public might have known. I don't know. We should talk about that. So whether we promised a statement. Statements is all the charter uh, charter requires. That I, we could potentially try it. My, my thinking is whatever policy we come up with goes through town attorney. Yeah. We oh, send yeah. the wording off to her for... Maybe the agency, a picture of each candidate, maybe. Well, the League of Women Voters doesn't have pictures, does it? Right. Don't send, don't send. So length... Maybe that's good. Do we have a desired length yet? A desired length. Length. 50 words. You never know. Well, I, I was looking what at JCA's was 330. That's almost a page of text. That's approximation, right? Right, no, but, yeah. but that gives us an idea of how much writing 300 and some words is. Oh, but I remember trying to fit things into small. <laughs> I'd rather almost err on the side of longer. I was going to say 500. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking 500, but then I'm like, that's really long. <laughs> I would use my one of my hundred word as my website, you know, for more information too. But yeah. and actually, I might use all my words for that. So there's a possibility that the only place people will go will be this website. I mean, as a candidate, you can use it however you want, but we have to, you know, if someone's looking for voter information, in general at least in my past experience, the first place I've always gone is the town's voter, voter education website. And so, because <laughs> I want to see the ballot and who's, it's how you get who's running, it's you get the full list and all of that. So that's where I sort of start. Other people start in other places, obviously. Um, but I could see someone only looking here. But that's, that's up to the candidate, but I think the goal you know, my experience on the Charter Commission was to try and give all candidates, no matter their resource availability, an equal footing somewhere to get their name and some of the stuff out. And that was why we put this in here, was that attempt, which is I think why I err on the longer side of enough to be able to introduce who you are and, yeah, the why you're running, what you might do. The uh, League of Women Voters, I found their survey, they had five questions, but the total number of words for all five questions is 200. So half a page. No, a whole page. 200. That is not a lot. No. So what was the individual question? Um, five questions would be 40. 40 words each. Yeah. How did we just develop a diverse pool of qualified candidates? How would we prioritize capital projects? What are more initiatives we support regarding affordable housing? That's three words. How do you address the effects of declining school-age populations? And then how do we become a leader in climate change? Right. Those very specifically say what the issues are. Yep. 
that the league once addressed. And it seems to me that a candidate's statement should be up to the candidate what they address and how the they address it. Open. Yeah. Totally yeah, and open. I mean, there there is a benefit of having a tight limit because it makes you really refine what you're saying. Uh, but. If you make it too big, like 500 words, what's going to happen is you're going to have people that use all 500 words and others that have 40. So it'll be a very obvious yep. difference. Right. <laughs> Um, and it's not clear which one I'd vote for. Right. <laughs> but, but I think I, I, I'm, I'm, I think 500 might be too many. That's like a full page. But 250, 300, somewhere in there, I think seems. And you can buy extra words from your other candidates if they want. <laughs> we need a number. <laughs> we need a number. Shall we just go with 300? We'll, we'll start with 300. Well, yeah, this, is, this, is, this is to give me a way to draft. And I'm just thinking of my experience doing this. I had a really hard time with all of these kids in the statement phase. Yeah. Right. The longer, though, means you don't have to spend so much time trying to figure out how to cut the one word here to make it fit yeah. under your word limits, which is yeah. annoying, too. Um, so right now, the parameters that I'm going to be working on a draft under are 300 words, um, that there's no revisions once submitted, so you get one email in, um, essentially. The candidates submit by a certain date, which is five, at, at this point the draft will say five days after the filing deadline, whatever language, but that's what the clerk will be 15 days. I'm going to look at our definition of days in places because the charter defines it and that might actually put those two closer together than we think. Yeah. Um, it should be so five is going to be business days. Fifteen I think is going to be non is going to be everything. So in theory that might just put it about a week after the five. I just have to make sure the definitions yeah, yeah. make sure that that 15 falls after all signature certifications are required because we don't want it up before that. Um, email, the clerk will publish, yep, email only, and right now the address we're going to give is townclerk at amherstna.gov, um, is how you submit. Include that the website will have the disclaimer on it. Um, and the other thing I was thinking of is that we need to, in this policy, state that the town clerk will delete all excess words. So if someone has submitted a statement that is 350, they delete from 301 forward. 301 to 350. They don't. They, it's not like they're just or they they don't go back to the candidate to say, oh, you you wrote 350. You got to cut it down. Nope. They stop at 300 and everything else is gone. Or the other day, um, just subjective. Hmm. No, because that, that, that's, that's. But the, the best thing would be an online well, form like the League of Women Voters. That do. doesn't accept more yeah, than a certain accept. words. Yeah, I think that, yeah. We'd have to see if, we'll, we'll look at that. Um, yeah. Is an online form that doesn't accept. Does Joe Gill and Carter have to do it? Joe Gill and Jackie yeah. Carter. Yeah, so we'll look at whether an online firm that doesn't accept a certain number of words is something that IT could do, because maybe that's the, I think that, yeah. instead of submit by email, um, I'll put online form. Is there anything, hyperlink. To your website? So one hyperlink allowed. But does that take up word space? Yes, I thought there was one word. It would be one, or, you know, the candidate statement, so, so here's what we have to come up with. What's this going to look like? Is it going to be name and then candidate statement? And then the name could include the hyperlink. The hyperlink. Oh, that's good. Just click yeah, on the just name. Can, yeah. Just click on the name. Yeah. So. Has an opportunity to pop a hyperlink. Some of, two, some of the questions will allow two hyperlinks. So one to your website, if you have one. The other one to your social media site, if you have one. I think we should do one, and people have to decide which one. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a 
just have to go down to Tom Clerk's office yeah, to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, Some people say so, that's very close to me. So one hyperlink. Right now, 300 words is what I'm going to present in a new draft. Um, all of those. Can we think of anything else? Do we want to set forth like no photos, no text only? Candidate statement would be text only. Yeah, text only. The legal women voters have email. That won't be published though. We have address that won't be published. Yeah, this will just be a statement with a name that allows you to hyperlink to one. We also one ask um, one years of paid web, web page occupation and residency. Mm. I didn't like either of those. Yeah. I think it's just Did name and then their statement. Yeah, and that complies with the charter. So I'll come up with a draft um, policy. So let me go find. Candidates' signatures, papers are due mid-September. I don't know whether it's the 17th, the 16th, or the 13th, or something like that. It's somewhere in there. Um, we have one GOL meeting prior to then, but it is after the council meeting that the September, we have a GOL meeting scheduled for September 11th. September 9th is sort of the next, we have the meeting on the 26th and then the September 9th council meeting. Yeah. And then we don't have a council meeting until the 17th, which is a joint meeting, but our next non-joint meeting with the school committee is the 23rd. Um, 23rd? Of September. The 17th is the one joint with oh. the school committee on a Tuesday right. night. Um, so the question is, if we do not schedule another GOL meeting earlier than the 9th, we can't get this policy to the council until the 23rd and under our council That's rules, it would be heard on the 23rd, but generally not voted on until October. So I was thinking we might want to schedule a meeting on September 4th solely for this policy. I have our next one's the 11th, not the 4th. I thought we were the first and third. We, I, I put them okay. to try and comply with the council meeting. Uh, right. So we're normally one and three with the council, but the council meetings two because right, of right. the thing. So the fourth is fine with me because usually it's a Thursday. <laughs> but there is a citizen naturalization. Yes. So from the and I go. I plan on going to that. So that's why I say if we do the fourth, it would only be for this policy, so okay. that we would be out by noon. It would start at ten thirty, and we should be able to be done in time to go to that because I don't see okay. this taking another full hour. So I'm gonna say um, so that does that sound we'll schedule a separate meeting just for this so that we can try and get this on the September 9th yes, council meeting yes. um, so I will let everyone know I will get this room reserved um, 1030 I'll come in with a draft policy that goes with this. Um, if we want this heard at the September 9th council meeting, the next thing I'm curious about from the two of you is, should I, when I draft this policy, send it on to town attorney to try and get town attorney review, knowing that some of these things may change, like the number of words or form versus email, um, well, to try and get started on that review so hopefully it would be back in time or or should I just talk to Paul and Lynn about what timing they would like for that? Well, it seems to me as long as we do it now, um, really it doesn't, it doesn't have to have the number of words or what kind of, that, that's minor. That has nothing to do with, but it does need to have all the other material signed. And I think we want them in slow. My thought was the sooner we can get it to them, I, you know, we'll be making changes, I suspect, on the 4th, but they wouldn't necessarily affect a legality. Exactly. Um, and then we might be able to have that response back maybe by the 4th, but at least by the 23rd when the vote at the council would happen if we hear it on the 9th and the 23rd. 
does that sound like a plan? So when I get this draft done this week, I will send it to Paul and Lynn for request to send it on. Clearly labeled draft. Um, and all. Are you going to make the fourth, please? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's protect Kyle. Standing, standing, standing. I teach that one. Yeah, I can make okay. Yeah, we'll be done. I think, wait, wait, then. it'll happen. Wait. It's a Wednesday morning. Wednesday. Yeah, I can make it. Okay. We could make it, Paul can make it early. Yeah, we could make potentially make, I don't know what Evan and George's teaching schedules yeah. are. Yeah. Um, I think we're all, but we are a committee of teachers. Yeah. Or a quorum of teachers. Or a quorum of teachers and teachers. Let's let's keep it at 10:30. I will email both of them to at least let them know. Um, and if they have problems with it, I'll see if earlier might be. We'll try and work something out. But we're definitely going to try and get a meeting that week. If I have to do a Google, you know, some sort of doodle poll for a different time, figure something out. But the goal is to get this to the ninth. Um, okay, so I will draft that. We don't have to vote on anything. I don't think on that. That leaves us with public comment. There's no public adoption of the August 7th minutes they got uploaded today have you had a chance to read them do we want to wait or we, yeah, okay. yeah, who were you the only one absent on that one yeah yeah you were here no, no I wasn't. Yeah. Pat was here. yeah Pat was the one that wasn't here. <laughs> you're I accurate on that. Your name. I had to keep saying your name as the person that's not here. Okay. Yes, you're accurate on that. Yeah, um, yeah so I think I, I, I went through them. Um, there was an extra comma in the very first thing about when you deleted Pat's name from present to absent. The comma didn't right. go with it. But, um, you I'll know. Move, I'll move to approve. I'll move to yeah. approve just to get, keep it going. Yeah, okay, I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is three zero to approve the August seven minutes. Um, what happens if you can? Can you move? If you're going to abstain from a vote, can you make a motion to put it on the table? I think so. Yeah. I think anyone can. I mean, okay. you can make the motion and then vote against the motion. Yep. <laughs> so. You can make a motion. I, you can do anything you want once the motion's made. Okay, so given that it is 12:15, we could go back to discussion on policies for resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, but I don't think it's worth it. No. it I there's did, just no time necessary for it. Yes, Pat? I want to say that I thought the work done on work groups was good, so I'm glad it happened. Yeah. Excellent. So I have a bunch of work to do to get stuff to <laughs> the meeting on Monday. Um, so I'll... I will be drafting a report and a couple of reports, I think. Um, I think that's it. Anyone have any comments, any I concerns? Done, as always. Then we are adjourned at 1216. And we'll meet at 2.30. Yeah.